Whether you are new to Shopify or you're already a Shopify store owner, you've probably encountered a code that looks something like this. This is Shopify Liquid, a template language created by Shopify that serves as a framework for all Shopify themes. In today's video, we'll take a closer look at Shopify Liquid. We'll start by understanding Shopify Liquid further, and then we'll learn about its features. Are you ready? Let's begin. To recap, Shopify Liquid is a template language used for creating or modifying Shopify themes. If you're familiar with Ruby, you probably have heard about this template language because it's written in Ruby or it's known to be written in Ruby. But in terms of syntax, it's very different compared to other programming languages. We'll get back to this in a minute. In addition, Shopify Liquid is very limited, like there's a lot that you cannot do with Liquid. For example, you cannot retrieve a data from a third-party server, just from Shopify. Now, what is it used for? In web development, there are two contents that you can render, static content and dynamic content. Static content is a content of a page that stays the same and is usually hard-coded in HTML, whereas dynamic content is a content of a page that changes depending on specific parameter. For example, we have the following product page. It specifically rendered this product for cats because in the URL, we specified that we want to render the specific product. In Shopify, this is called a URL handle. And by changing this to a different handle of a product, the product page will render a different product. This is how dynamic content is being rendered. In addition, Shopify uses its own architecture or template files to display these pages. For example, this page is using product.json. It's a JSON template that uses sections to complete the page. Taking a closer look at the section files, you will see that there's a liquid code mixed with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So to put it simply, Shopify Liquid is like the middleman between Shopify stores and the server of Shopify, where all the data about your Shopify store is stored. And then when a Shopify store asks for a data through Liquid, Shopify Liquid will ask the server of Shopify if that data that is being requested is available. If it's available, then the server will give it back to Liquid. Then Liquid will give that to the Shopify store's theme. Otherwise, if it's not available, then the server of Shopify will just return a 404 error response. Shopify Liquid is categorized by three features. Objects, tags, and filters. Objects, also known as variables, are wrapped in double curly braces and it's used to output pieces of data from a Shopify store. For example, this is a shop object. Inside of this object, there are properties or attributes that you can use by using dot notation. Let's say we use the name attribute, so you're going to type it like this, so shop dot symbol and then name. This will render the name of your Shopify store. There are plenty of attributes that you can use from most of the objects in Shopify. So if you wish to learn more about these objects, I suggest going to the Shopify references page and get to know these attributes or objects. Now let's proceed to tags. Tags in Shopify Liquid are the programming logic that tells templates what to do. These tags are wrapped in curly braces, followed by percentage symbols, and it's usually followed by a closing tag. Tags are divided into four categories, control flow, iteration, theme, and variable tags. Control flow tags are the tags that you can use to create conditions. This is the if, the unless, the else or else if, the case and when, and lastly, the and or operators. To create a tag, you need to start it with the tag itself. Say for example the if tag, then you need to close it with a closing tag and if. However, not all tags are required to have a closing tag. A good example of this is the else or else if. These tags can only be used between if and end if. You cannot do it like this or like this. Now, if you want to create multiple conditions for a control flow tag, you can use the operators AND or OR. For example, we have the following condition. If you're using AND, 
Two conditions must be true in order to execute the block of codes inside of the if. If you're using or, either of the two conditions can be true, it will still execute the code inside of the if tag. Now all of this are part of the fundamentals of programming. And so if you're not familiar with it, I suggest go and learn it because we are not going to go in depth with this topic. Next is the iteration tags. Iteration tags are the tags that you can use to repeat blocks of code. This is where you can use the for tag to loop through an array of values. For example, we have the following for tag with a condition for each product in the collection that products, we are going to render the name of the product. So for example, in this collection, we have three products product 1, product 2, and product 3. This entire code will basically output three heading title ones with a text product 1, product 2, and product 3. You can also combine for tag with an else tag. This is very useful too, especially if you want to know whether the for tag executed the codes inside of it or not. Next up is the theme tags. Theme tags are the tags that you can use to generate template specific HTML codes, dividing arrays into multiple pages, and telling Shopify themes to render or use a specific layout or snippets. So this is where you will find the form tag, the section tag, the pagination tag, and the layout tag. Don't worry, we're going to be using most of these tags in the future lessons. Lastly is the variable tags. Variable tags are the tags that you can use to create liquid variables. If you're familiar with JavaScript or other programming languages, you can create variables most of the time you're using var keyword or a data type. In Shopify liquid, you can use either assign or capture to create variables. So how can you create a variable? Say for example, we use the assign tag. To create a variable, you can create the sign tag followed by the name of the variable then followed by an equal sign symbol or equal sign to create or assign a value for example we can use the name of the shopify store and pass it to this variable now if you use this variable like how you use an object this will output the name of the shopify store so those are the tags now let's continue to the last feature of Shopify Liquid, and that is the filters. Filters are kind of hard to explain, but to put it simply, they are methods that modifies the value or the output of an object. They are placed within an object tag and is denoted by a pipe symbol. Now let's take a look at this example. Let's say we have a product that title object here. We can use a filter by adding a pipe symbol here and then specify what filter that you want to use. Let's say we use the upcase filter. This will then change the output of the object and make the string all uppercase. That's basically how filters work. They change or modify the output of an object. Now, there are plenty of filters that you can use for every situation. There are filters for strings, for numbers, for arrays, for URLs, for colors, etc. But they all do the same thing. They modify the value or the output of an object. So that is Shopify Liquid, a template language used for rendering pieces of data from a Shopify store. Now, if you have any question, let me know in the Q&A section or in the comments below. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe and like this video. I would appreciate it if you like this video because I took so much time making this video. It's been a fun editing. I've been working on this for about a week and I learned so much about making 8-bit animations or characters. And I also learned about DaVinci Resolve, making animation using DaVinci Resolve. That's really, really amazing to use. So yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit like, subscribe, bell, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.